My complete name is Dabala Rajagopal Reddy. I shortened it to Raj Reddy. I've gone by that name for now almost 60, 70 years. I come from a small village called Khartour. I was the first and maybe, maybe the only one to get a degree. And my elder, elder brothers uh, could have gone to college. But my father said, look, somebody has to look after all this property and land. After graduating from Gindi Engineering College in India, Raj went off to the University of New South Wales in Australia to pursue his master's degree in civil engineering. Here, he was first introduced to computers. After graduating, he started a career at IBM, where he made a discovery. Then I was reading papers on artificial intelligence. And I said, my gosh, you know, I wonder if it is really possible. If it is, I should be right, right there. In 1963, Raj pursued a PhD at Stanford, pioneering connected speech recognition. He worked under AI pioneer John McCarthy, who had just been awarded a DARPA grant and a dedicated computer to research AI. It was a PDP-1. They were just coming out at that time, 1963. There are a number of uh, people, like Steve Russell, who did the space war. All of them would work nine to five. And after that, the computer would be completely empty. Nobody else would be using it. So I would work every night, seven days a week, uh, all night, you know. And the, one of the suggestions was, hey, we just got this computer. It has an everyday converter and you can digitize speech. Maybe one of the students can build a speech recognition system. So I said, I'll do it, you know, and that's how I got into it. Raj was uniquely equipped for the challenge. I come from Indian language, Sanskrit and so on, right? They're all phonetically based. You speak what you write, and you write what you speak. I said, let me see if I can recognize vowels as the first thing. And I built a pretty good working vowel recognizer. I was trying to understand the connected speech recognition, and, and then you apply it to uh, some application like hand-eye system controlling some computer with voice. In 1969, Raj moved to Carnegie Mellon University, becoming the fourth pillar of a world-class computer science department. The great thing about uh, the, uh, the people that were there at that time, they had that expansive view. Anything goes, you know, if somebody wanted to come and do music, they could do that. In that sense, they did not limit what you could and could not do within computer science. As a professor, Raj worked alongside his students, empowering them to make significant contributions to the field of speech recognition. You learn as much from students as you, as you learn from senior people sometimes, but you must be open and willing. In 1979, Raj founded and led the Robotics Institute, the first robotics department at any U.S. university. Autonomous systems, the autonomous vehicle projects and the drones, all of that came out of there. And uh, the other one is, you know, ma manufacturing automation. Raj later went on to create and encourage world-class centers and institutes at CMU. Raj believed that computing could be a broader field with wider social impact than the studies of computers themselves. So much of the work in the last 20 years has been technology in service of society. Raj was instrumental in building Le Centre Mondial Informatique et Ressources Humaines with the French government, bringing computing technology to developing nations. He helped launch the Million Book Project to make digitized books available online worldwide. And he co-founded Rajiv Gandhi University of Knowledge Technologies in India, providing education to students from rural villages. When they graduate with a degree, they were the first child in their family to ever go to college and graduate from school. I have been in this birth of computing from the beginning, 1959. I was fortunate to be in the right place at the right time to kind of be exposed to all these things. And I um, feel very lucky.